here with Dr. Tim Williams talking about the digital Hume, digital strategy for, for Hume I guess. Uh, last time we caught up Tim you were at the start of the process. We're getting towards the end now and I believe you've um, got some really encouraging signs coming out of Hume. I think um, uh, it's, it's kind of a, a good news story I think in, in itself. Uh, we've been finding out lots of <coughs> digital innovation, some of which has been finding it itself onto your website which I think is excellent and really innovative, uh, digital yeah. Hume. Uh, I think the most important thing actually is that we discover a, a region that wants to collaborate to bring reinvention and change to the economy and society. So I think the backdrop to the study is almost the most important thing, which yeah. is that these are partners uh, willing to, uh, open to change, already di digitally innovating, not afraid of these technologies, wanting yeah. to find out more about them, but essentially working together, private, public, not-for-profit, local councils, different tiers of government. I mean, it's exemplary in itself as, yeah. a, as a backdrop. So that's a great backdrop. And I think... So you've um, been seeing this, you've obviously worked with a few regions at the moment. It's, yeah, this, yeah. So this is a standout. I have to say that I yeah. think that the, uh, although there have been strengths uh, in other regions, and I've done a lot of global work on this thing, getting enthusiastic partners that have already broken down some barriers between themselves. And I think we, we, the really important thing to grasp if you don't know the region is that this is a region that's been collaborating for some time, developing its own economic thinking, its growth strategies. So what we're doing here, it feeds into that. It's not an eccentric add-on. It's, uh, it's in the DNA, this collaborative stuff. Uh, and it will be a major strength going forward in delivery. Great. Um, supply gaps, one of the things you've, you've noticed. Tell us a little bit about that. Well, I mean, you know, the good news comes with a, ch with a challenge. The yep. good news about partnership working, the good news about the NBN arriving. We're very, uh, we're looking forward, but we're also being realistic about the need to fill certain gaps. So it's a 10 year rollout program for the NBN. It's only coming in the first three years in three, four local government areas out of the 12 yeah. in, in the area. So, you know, expectations will rise. People will start saying, why can't we have 12 megabits plus or whatever it is? Why can't we have fiber? Is it, is it unfair? Is it unequal? I think the first thing to say, and there's a positive, I think, is that most of the public services transformation that we will see in this region and most of the kind of um, economic enabling will happen because of speeds of 12 megabits. This is not, you don't just need a gigabit or something enormous, or you don't yeah. actually need fiber to every premises in the region to make a transformation. And I think that's lesson one. There's loads of good innovative things we're going to do with the speeds that everybody is going to get because they're still two or three times faster than average yes. in, in the air. I think the second thing is it's coming to the NBN in itself is coming to regional Australia almost before the cities. This is a yeah. really important competitive advantage we need to get hold of. And I think that the other thing is around so the supply gaps are around things like how do we improve mobile coverage. Uh, one of the interesting un un unsaid things about the NBN is it's going to give some backhaul capacity to improve mobile coverage to there's existing fiber networks in the region that are yeah. underutilized. They're actually quite fast. You know, so VicTrack has some, hospitals have some, education institutions have some. How do we collaborate to use them is really there. So part of the strategy is how do we, uh, how do we fill some supply gaps during the 10 year rollout of the yeah. NBN? Very innovative stuff requiring that partnership working. So that's good. Uh, I think the second thing around um, enablers, so partnership working is a key enabler. Lots of individual partners, so I've mentioned a few of them there, yep. already beginning to innovate themselves. We see some of it on, on the website. Linking those together, sharing best practice, saving costs, working together. What do we do? So there's a lot of that in the strategy too. Great. Um, I'm big on public service innovation. Yes. Tell us a little bit about some of the things that are happening in the public yeah, service well, already. Well, this comes back to the point about speeds. Yeah. You know, much of the public service transformation that we wish to see in health, for example, which you know the region needs to position itself as a laboratory for experimentation around some of these things, and I think it can do. Um, and I think around health, for example, so you know we're obviously now on the edge of transferring major files uh, online really quickly, really cheaply for healthcare uh, patient files, very important, remote. Uh, patient uh, engagement with, with expertise hundreds of miles away, telehealth, that's coming, but coming faster. We need to organize ourselves for it. So the health side, I think, is really transformational and plays to not just healthcare for individuals, but the real attraction of the region as a place to live and be, because many people have anxieties about living in regional Australia. They think, will I get the public services that I need? The answer is yes, you will now. 
uh, innovation around education, you know, uh, distance learning, all that stuff has been there in principle for a while. It's picking up momentum. We look at it in yep. the study. So I think, but also public service transformation also creates markets for the private sector in the area. You know, we, we, we have a big emphasis in, in the study on open data. You know, loads of the councils in the area produce loads of data sets. Can you put them online so that small businesses can benefit? from yep. public service innovation. So there's a public-private partnership moment in this strategy. Yeah, I mean, I, I know having spoken to some of the local governments ourselves, um, they're doing some really innovative stuff um, with the likes of social media where they're, um, you know, they're doing consultations online, they're yeah. making good yeah. use of uh, online video to get out to stakeholders. This is funny, I mean, it, when we started this thing a few, you know, some months ago, some people were saying, oh, you know, is it us? And I think everybody's just picking up the, the enthusiasm and the message that this is the way in which citizens will wish to engage in future. And it's not just the cost, it's really interesting, it's not just the, oh dear, we have to reorganise ourselves around that, what will that take? It's actually a real advantage, you get better buy-in from the community if you engage with them much more. And also you get different kinds of people. Anybody who's ever done community engagement will tell you there's a much broader group of people will engage yeah. online than in normal community consultation. I think that's really important. But also we get insight, we get data. The challenge actually moves to managing the information. Yeah. Um, and I think part of the uh, partnership working going forward will be about sharing some of these experiences. Yeah. Well, I think the other thing that comes out of that is yeah, that you've got the technology now, do you have the skills to it's really look at data, for example? I really think this is, I think we almost get ourselves misled in this territory about the techie stuff. You know, I've said before, this is far too important to be left to the geeks, you know? Yes, yeah. It really is. And it's about mainstream management in the public services now. It's about looking at your business models. How do you deliver and how can this make it better, cheaper and just change the experience for people? And I think you'll find there's a massive amount in this territory and there's quite a lot in the strategy. Great. And if we come on, on to, I guess, digital business and, and, and digital marketing, yep. we've done a little bit of work and we're seeing um, some really good vi businesses. What have you come across, well, I exactly guess, in terms the same. of business? I think there's, uh, there's a range of businesses in the area. I mean, it's, it would be a mistake. It's interesting. The generalisation about uh, regional Australia is that it's all, a lot about SMEs, which it is. But of course, we've got major sectors in this place, food processing, manufacturing, that are kind of market leaders and quite big in scale. And there's a lot of digital innovation going on in those places, you know, where, you know, we've, we've got farmers in the region who have got remote censoring going, looking at what cattle are doing. It's really quite fascinating stuff. Um, so that's happening. We've got high-end high design-based manufacturing happening. We need to learn from that. But there is this, uh, I think, important point that a lot of SMEs, who are the biggest beneficiaries, I think, from online business activity and trading, the, the irony is that they're almost so busy and so busy kind of fighting today's battles that they can't necessarily plan for their future. So there's uh, quite a lot in engaging with this strategy and on, online, having a look at what people can do. I think there's quite an important moment for the public sector as well in terms of business support, working with peak organisations for business around information sharing. Business is great. You just show them one thing, you know this, you just show them one thing and they think, ah, I get this. You know, once, once you do show and tell, Show and tell is yeah. really important in this, because you know 70% of the uh, of the businesses that will benefit from the digital era are conventional businesses yeah. that are just using online platforms in a really interesting way, creating new business contacts globally, new markets internationally, alliances throughout Australia, all that kind of stuff. But also, also interestingly, if they're businesses who sometimes have difficulty retaining or recruiting staff, I think it'll be much more attractive. Uh, going forward for people to be able to uh, say you, you can engage with the best in your business by being in, in regional Australia rather than in the city. So I think, I think in terms of staff recruitment, retention, all that kind of stuff, it does play though I think to the challenge of training, skills development. So I think there's a good, again, I think public-private partnering, what are the skills providers doing in this space? We yeah. ask that question, we, there's a lot going on. Business support, what does that look like in the digital era? All that kind of stuff, you know, this yeah. is quite an embracing all-embracing strategy, but you get the flavour that the, there's a big opportunity for the private sector in this. And, and by the way, a great symbolic thing, you know, you can export services online globally from regional Australia and from the, the, the Hume region. Uh, these are not remote anymore, these are not distant places, they're next door in, in digital era terms and that's really yeah. important. Absolutely. So just to finish up, Give us the three, I guess, key recommendations you think are going to come out of this report. 
I think uh, w one is that the is to exploit one is about supply sp supply gaps. We need to be innovative, work together around how do we get the best out of the MBN, but also other capacity that is out there, and there are real opportunities. So that's number one. Number two is enthuse and engage the population, the community. Let's make this the smart region in Australia where everybody's online by 2017. Let's set a kind of regional target. We need, you know, we, this is not a, a mysterious thing. This is a get, get common enthusiasm going across the region. I think we can. I think the third thing is the quality of public-private partnering around this moment. Uh, working together, we can make this uh, an economically uh, vibrant region. Again, it is, but it can be even more so connected to the world economy. R recruiting people from elsewhere to come and join us on this journey of re a revitalised region. So it really is a mag magnificent opportunity for the, for the region. I, I think that the, also there's a huge competitive advantage in, in what they've done already. Let's just sum it up, right? They are a, a region that's showing real partnership working, that is, wants this agenda, gets it, and is going to work in all sorts of ways to deliver this thing. And its broader objective is not some techie obsession, but the economic reinvention uh, of the region, and a, as a, also as a place to live and work. It's got massive attractions. These are going to be added to in the digital era. Great. Thank you, Tim.